Hello, good evening and welcome to Biz First Reveal 360, your weekly roundup of the top business news and developments impacting the Sri Lankan economy. I'm Nadim Majid. Let's start with our top story tonight. A European Union parliamentary delegation that is currently on a fact-finding mission in Sri Lanka says that the government needs to do more to improve labor rights before it can gain eligibility for the GSP plus trade concession from the EU. A European Union parliamentary delegation touring the island on the invitation of trade unions told the media that the government must do more to improve labour rights and ensure benefits of the GSP Plus trade concession reach Sri Lankan workers. Um, I think there is a lot of admiration for the ratification of the UN conventions that has been achieved, but there is also still some worry about the implementation of the uh, conventions, um, especially uh, on the right of association, uh, the right to bargain on collective agreements, um, and also the right to strike. There are still uh, quite some worries, um, and we believe that um, this should be improved, and it can be improved. We've talked to all the parties, um, and on all sides, uh, there is a, a great willingness to change this. We pr uh, want to propose to the European Parliament um, uh, that we will um, uh, make this an uh, 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 enforceable condition um, to make sure that uh, the benefits of the DSP Plus system also reach the workers. So 50% of the benefits should reach the workers. In general, I think I'm very much in favor of DSP Plus being granted to Sri Lanka. We want that. And I think, I mean, what I've seen in Sri Lanka is a lot is happening and, and things are moving in the right direction. But, you know, we want to make sure that this movement keeps continuing continuing. So it's working in the right direction, but you know we need some extra push to make sure that the enforcement of uh, the, the, especially the labor rights um, is, is ensured and is enforceable so that in, in a few, well, half a year time or a year time, we really see that the, the, the benefits are reaching everyone in Sri Lanka. The European Commission has proposed the European Parliament to restore the GSP Plus trade concessions to Sri Lanka, which would allow Sri Lankan exports gain duty-free access to the EU market. Now, to be precise, what happened is that the European Commission has made a proposal that needs to be uh, agreed on by the European Parliament. The proposal by the European Commission says we think it is okay, just the ratification of the uh, conventions is sufficient, um, but the European Parliament still gets to have their say on it, and we disagree with the Commission. So that's, that's essentially what's happening. It's true that the Commission has made a different proposal, but now it's up to the European Parliament to make a decision on this, and we can object, and we will with this particular condition. The EU temporarily withdrew the GSP trade benefit to Sri Lanka in 2010 over the island's human rights record. The government is confident of regaining the GSP Plus trade deal in May and has said that it is under no obligation to foreigners in getting the concession but only to its own people. With China pumping billions of dollars into developing ports and highways in Sri Lanka, Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe this week sought to allay fears from Japan a key ally of both the United States and India, by noting that no Sri Lankan port will be made available for any foreign military activity. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe assured Japan on Wednesday that Sri Lanka will make sure no foreign military activity is conducted at its ports as China invests heavily in roads and harbours on the island nation. Beijing has been pumping hundreds of millions of dollars in Sri Lanka's infrastructure since the end of the war, making India, Japan and the United States nervous. China's investments in transportation infrastructure in Sri Lanka are considered part of its ambitions to build maritime routes to the oil-rich Middle East and on to Europe. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is reported to have said at the same news conference that the era of the Indo-Pacific is now being ushered in and its true regional prosperity cannot come into being without the realization of a free and open Indo-Pacific region. He has further said to achieve regional prosperity, it is essential for Sri Lanka to achieve sustainable growth as a hub and develop ports that are open to all. The proposed foreign exchange bill is facing some serious opposition. Already three petitions have been filed at the Supreme Court challenging the legality of the bill. 
Sri Lankans are using the workforce of the country and keeping their valuable dollar earnings in other countries, while our people suffer in other countries and send money into the country. We are telling these people to bring this money into the country and they will receive benefit for it. Whenever we try to do something good, there are people who stand against it. They cannot stop this. The foreign exchange bill was tabled in Parliament on Friday. Submitting a petition before court yesterday, attorney at law Darshan Verendwege requested the Supreme Court to determine whether the bill or articles of the bill were inconsistent with the Constitution. He points out that powers of the Central Bank and the Monetary Board are being concentrated in the hands of the Minister of Finance. The Central Bank and the Monetary Board has a very important role in maintaining financial stability in the country. However, with this bill, they will not be able to do anything without first obtaining the approval of the Minister of Finance. There will be a concentration of power in the hands of the Finance Minister, which will lead to unexpected and foreseeable consequences. This new bill will also seriously affect the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, Convention on the Suppression of Terrorist Financing and the Bribery Act. Here are some of the controversial clauses that have been highlighted through the petition that was submitted yesterday. Clause 8. Authorizes other categories, classes and or persons to deal in foreign exchange. This means the Central Bank and Monetary Board will not set the exchange rates. Clause 9. Articles 1, 2, 3 and 4 as well as Clause 11, Article 1. Articles have been drafted to enable the Minister of Finance to have an upper hand and or unwarranted control over the affairs, powers and or duties of the Central Bank and to negate the entrenched provision of the Monetary Law Act No. 58 of 1949. Clause 13. Board of Inquiry to be appointed through the Foreign Exchange Act will be partial as long as the appointment, remuneration and the power of removal is vested with the Minister of Finance. Clause 22 has no binding force on the Minister of Finance to comply with advice of the Monetary Board in the event of a potential threat to the financial stability of Sri Lanka. Attorney at law Nagananda Koditwaku as well as members of the joint opposition also filed petitions with the Supreme Court today against the Foreign Exchange Bill. When we come back, a chat with the French trade union leader on the impact of Brexit. Welcome back to the program. Will Britain's exit or Brexit from the European Union inspire other European nations to also reclaim control? News First Stephanie Lazarus sat down with Jean Pierre Page, a veteran French trade union leader, to get some answers. Mr. Page, with the elections coming up uh, and also the Brexit, we see a huge sentiment about disintegration of the European Union itself. Countries having this wide sentiment about removing themselves from the European Union. Some say it was not even voted in and people's choices and policies of nations are being governed by this unitary bo body. What do you think about it? What is exactly happening in the European Union? Well, <coughs> what you said is very correct. Um, situation in Europe is characterized by a systemic crisis, which means it's a crisis, it's an economic crisis, it's a social crisis, it's a political crisis, it's an institutional crisis, etc., etc., etc. So the feeling of the people in Europe, in my country as well, but in, in Europe in general, is that uh, what they were expecting from the European Union didn't show up. And even more, situation as get, is getting, uh, you know, uh, like what we could say, a disaster. Mm. It's a social disaster. The level of unemployment has increased terribly. In France, we have 9 million of unemployed. Mm. In Germany, 15 million people live under the level of poverty. Right. If you go to countries like Greece or Spain, you will see more than 50% of the population under 25 years old uh, uh, are unemployed. No perspective. Well, we spoke about employment, unemployment that's rampant in all European countries, and especially, is that the reason why um, uh, 
many countries are planning on even leaving the European Union because they do not reflect, the policies do not reflect their own national um, needs and wants? Yeah, no, well, uh, <coughs> people were expecting a lot. And, well, at least the leaders of the European Union, when it started, you know, uh, promised mm. a lot of uh, things, you know, peace, full employment, social progress, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, today, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. So <coughs> the concrete experience of the people, tell them that, uh, well, finally, uh, that was not a good solution. Mm. Of course, cooperation in Europe is necessary. Mm. But true the system of the European Union, which is a kind of a very dictatorial, we can say that, system, you know. We have a parliament in Europe, but the parliament, the European parliament, has no responsibilities, real responsibilities. The whole f functionment of the European Union is run by what we call the European Commission, Brussels Commission. Those people are technocrats, they're not elected, and they decide of everything. When I said everything is everything, mm -hmm. maybe you won't believe me, but they even decide how many liters of water you use in your bathroom. But these are not legally bathroom. binding. These rules are not legally binding. So there is a leverage that's uh, posed at these countries, these European countries, to really, they, they are given a choice. They are given a choice to go ahead with it or not. So what's really keeping the them from... The problem now is that uh, all the countries in Europe, for, for, I'll take one like mine, the one I know best, 75% uh, mm. of the laws are decided by Brussels, which means that parliament, national parliament, has a very little space mm. to decide what should be the policy, whether it is economic, social, uh, you, you say it, foreign policy, etc., etc. Everything is decided elsewhere. So <clears throat> people believe that uh, their right to choose, the, 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 the feeling, the, you know, of being, uh, of having a sovereignty, mm -hmm. being menaced, has brought a lot of people to, to say, what's the use? What's the use? And uh, maybe the solution is better if we leave. And this is what has happened in, uh, in the UK with the Brexit. But this is what can happen tomorrow in Italy and even in France. So, you know, already the Brexit <laughs> has created a situation that nobody was expecting because who could have expected that a country like the UK will leave the European Union? But it happened. So if it has happened with the UK, it can happen with others, mm. you know? And uh, <clears throat> if you look at situation in Italy, for example, or in France, the feeling, the feeling mm. of getting out of the European Union has increased has increased. And so <clears throat> now, what to do? What to do? The problem is that uh, the only way, the only solution, which is uh, uh, which the European Union, the European Commission has chosen mm -hmm. until now, is to restrain the democratic rights of but, each country and of the people. But taking a step forward, um, Britain and France has had a long, 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 long years of relations and you see that through the wars it, it's been together, through economic treaties they've struck, through de uh, trade deals they've struck together. But their relationship has been an on and off kind of relationship. You've seen uh, Britain sometimes side with the US when it comes to France, uh, when it comes to policies. Uh, how will this Brexit change the relationship they've got? 
um, in terms of when you compare it to the years of relationship they've uh, had over the past? You know, the relationship between the UK and France, it's a long history, centuries of history. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, probably that the, the British dynasty originally comes from France. Mm. You know, we have been in a war. Mm. We have been fighting together. You know, we have been the both of those of our countries. We have been uh, among the most important colonial power. You know, <clears throat> so it's a long, long history. French like very much the British, even if and the British just the same. You know, with the with uh, French, they they, like, they love to come mm -hmm. to France as we love to go to. UK. So the relationship might have been conflictual mm -hmm. certain period of history, but uh, <clears throat> I would say that uh, there is a long uh, understanding between those two countries and, uh, and their people, even if our system are different. Uh, what will happen with uh, the Brexit? Well, <laughs> now <laughs> Now we are in the process of, uh, I mean, the UK is in the process of leaving the European mm -hmm. Union. By the way, they're still in the European Union mm -hmm. for the moment. Mm -hmm. But will they strike a better deal during these two years of... Uh, no, they, they have to, they, no, no, they have to negotiate mm -hmm. their way out. The way out is decided. Yeah. People have decided. Yes. So UK will leave. <coughs> the European Union. It's sure. Something sure. But now they have to negotiate the conditions. Mm -hmm. So they use one article of one of our treaty, <coughs> excuse me, the article number 50, and uh, which organize in some ways those negotiations. So this is what's going to happen. And uh, of course there is different way to look at those negotiations, if I listen to the prime, uh, British Prime Minister, new prime, min prime Minister, she said that they want to maintain with France and of, co of course with uh, the European Union strong relations, mm. you know, close relations. And I hear in the same time <laughs> one, one of the uh, leader of opposition in the UK saying that, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, saying that uh, uh, Theresa May, the Prime Minister, cannot, can have in the same time the battle and the price of the mm. battle, the money of the eat, battle. Eat the cake and have yeah, the yeah. Cake. So, <clears throat> and in Europe, Germany say, for example, that recently that. Uh, UK <coughs> will have to will have to uh, negotiate conditions of relations with the European Union based on the fact that they are not member anymore. So, which means that uh, the UK cannot pretend having the advantages of advantageous, you know, mm. uh, by being member of the European Union mm. and <laughs> not being anymore member of the European Union. So, so this is what I, what I believe is that there are going to be a negotiation. We'll have to see, uh, you know, it just started. So, uh, most probably, most probably, that decision will make UK even more closer to the US than it was before mm. regarding many aspects if, of if, politics. If Marine Le Pen wins mm. the elections, yeah. do you think she will take steps to remove France from the European Union? And what will the future hold for the European Union uh, if that happens? <clears throat> I'm not sure about that because, uh, well, it's very contradictory. On the one hand, she 
say sometimes that uh, she will organize a referendum so to leave the European Union and to leave the Euro. And on the other hand, she said some, that she's going to negotiate the treaties and things like that. So it's, it, that position, it's not clear. Mm. Of course, a lot of people believe that they want to leave. Mm. But when you look closer to the policy, the politics of the National Front of Marine Le Pen, mm. things are not so clear. In fact, her program regarding Europe or uh, many other issues is not clear at all. Mm. I mean, it's just, you know, surfing on the wave, mm. you know. People are unhappy. She goes along with what the people said. Well, we've come to the end of the program, uh, Ms. Page. Thank you very much for joining us. What to do with Hamban Twitter? On the other side of this break, the sentiments of the shipping and logistics sector. Welcome back to the program. On our final story tonight, amid the delays and concerns surrounding the Hamban Tota Port Development Project, the Shippers Academy brought together industry stakeholders to discuss ways in which to kickstart Hamban Tota. Let's look at the overall losses of Hamban Tota Port. 2012, six, 678 million. 2013, 5 billion. 2014, 3.8 billion. 2015, 4.8 billion. And 2016, 4.3 billion. Totaling up to 15.578 billion. Interestingly, SLPA needs only Sri Lanka rupees 10 billion to complete the East Container Terminal balance part of construction and equipment. With 15.578 million, we also could have bought Sri Lankan Airlines, a Airbus A321. So I am I'm giving comparisons just for you to understand the magnitude of the loss Hamad is making. Contrary to the information in the public domain, Sri Lanka Post Authority and all the government institutions in Sri Lanka called for request for proposals to develop Hambantota port three times in the past and failed to generate worthwhile, worthwhile, worthwhile interest. On the first occasion when RFPs were called in 2010, there were 27 proposals. And in 2012, there were 10 proposals. While in 2016, there were 10 proposals, out of which four were for bunkering. Strangely, the 2016 proposals have not been opened yet. They are kept sealed for whatever reason, I do not know. On all these occasions, there were only some who mentioned about cement factories sugar refining, which didn't see the light of the day. The obvious reasons for lack of interest is due to the lack of infrastructure, high cost of utilities, lack of hinterland, non-availability of support services, among many other reasons. Is there no hope for the Hambantata port? We have discussed that Hambantata port doesn't have a, hin doesn't have a hinterland able to generate cargo. So Hambantota is not a strategic port for commercial shipping business. There may be a strategic importance of Hambantota port for military reasons, but that is not dealt with in this paper. Of course, there is hope to develop Hambantota port with maritime industrial development areas called MIDAS in and around the Hambantota to generate cargo for the port. Like Mr. Vega Pitya's investment in uh, LPG uh, storage. Examples are importing and storage of bulk cargo such as sugar, flour, grain, 
wheat, LNG and LPG etc. and re-exporting in small parcels for regional ports. Importing crude oils, refining and exporting refined oils, importing bulk wheat, milling and exporting wheat flour, importing clinker and manufacturing cement and exporting are further examples. There is also possibility of developing Hambantota as a container port only provided a major shipping line agrees to use Hambantota as a regional hub. Example, APL in Kofakan and Maersk in Salala. They develop those two ports as their regional hubs. Why are the Chinese going, what are the Chinese going to do in Hambantota? Puzzle. Mind-boggling. Is it part of that one belt, one road? I do not know. In fact, I do not know the meaning of one belt, one road. It is believed, however, that Chinese government, in, uh, with Chinese government intervention, they will shift some of the above-mentioned business activities taking place within China or establishing new industrial activity to serve the Chinese market. Then there's another major issue. Sri Lanka does not have a national policy on port development. We do, do not know the government's thinking on tariff issues. Will Hambantota undercut and offer very low rates? Is the government promoting or curtailing interport competition within the country? Who will be the landlord in Hambantota? Who will provide navigational services? Attempts by the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport in Sri Lanka and the company of master mariners to initiate a national discussion on policy matters did not receive the support of the government. In most countries in Europe, the stated policies for the landlord and terminals owned and operated by private sector but are regulated by the government. There are also safeguards in Europe for local investors and local partners in port development. I believe these issues are being discussed currently in the committee or whatever that is being preparing uh, the documents for Hambantota Port. And that's a wrap of our show tonight. Don't forget to look us up on Facebook. You'll find us at Biz First Review 360. I'll see you again, same time, same place next week. This is Nadim Majid wishing you a happy and blessed Sinhala Tamil New Year. Good night and good luck.